What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and thanks to all of the new forks happening, I have decided to start retesting some older cards. I do realize that, of course, you're going to see these numbers elsewhere and be able to find a lot of them. However, getting all the numbers for every card possible on this channel is just kind of a personal goal that I'm hoping to achieve. So today we're going to be talking about the Sapphire Radeon Nitro so not the Nitro Plus, but the Nitro 4 gigabyte RX 460. It's kind of one of those cards that you can probably start picking up on the used market here shortly as new cards start coming out. And depending on the price, as it fluctuates, this video might help you determine whether or not it's a good idea to go ahead and start mining with one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back. So I'm not going to give you guys the numbers on how much profit you're going to make off of a card or what the ROI is in this series. This series is going to essentially shift into a format where you can come find the hash rates and run them on what to mine or coin wars as you decide to pick up a particular card. This is because those numbers are always fluctuating. It's either too volatile or however you want to call it to go ahead and predict how much you're going to make off of it at any given time and you're going to have to do some of that legwork to help you out i'll leave a link to coin wars and what to mine in the description below so you can link on over there and basically what you're going to do is find the algorithm that i'm testing and place in the numbers that i found and run the numbers yourself so that I think is going to be the best way to handle this and if I need to do a how-to video on that in particular let me know in the comment section and I don't mind going through a quick analysis so you guys can actually learn how to do it and not so much just sit here and listen to me tell you how to do it. Alright so disclaimers aside we have the Sapphire Nitro RX 464 gigabyte. It's actually a pretty solid card and pretty much trades blows with the RX 560. The other thing that's nice with this card in particular is it's going to have four gigabytes of video memory which is going to last longer on some of the memory hardened algorithms especially if we're talking about ethereum and so on and so forth now while the dag on ethereum will outgrow this eventually it's going to outgrow every card eventually just depending on the rate and of course you're going to have other alternative co coins that you can go ahead and mine after that happens so keep all of that in mind when you're looking at picking up mining cards because it might not be worth picking up an eight gigabyte card if you can pick something like this up cheaper and get a whole bunch of them depending on how the numbers turn out so speaking of numbers let's go ahead and talk about them first we have kryptonite light v7 like i said i felt like it was a good idea for us to go ahead and start reapproaching some of these numbers on these cards because a lot has changed and kryptonite has now forked into kryptonite light v7 kryptonite v7 and kryptonite heavy i have all three of those numbers and like i said light v7 is going to be 600 hash a second this would be on coin such as turtle coin moving on to crypto night itself we have a hash rate of 317 hash a second so about half that of crypto night light now a part of the reason why this is is in this video up here we talked about how the new algorithms have affected crypto night in general on CPUs and it seems to translate almost directly over to the GPU portion so as the scratch pad size increases from one megabyte on crypto night light v7 to crypto night you're going to see pretty much almost a halving in the performance of each various card so you're looking at 317 hash a second here and you will see a power fluctuation of an increase between three and five watts. Now we'll talk about power consumption here in a second. Next we have Crypto Knight Heavy, which is going to run you about 152 hash a second on the RX 460. So if you don't see the trend here with the Crypto Knight algos, 
Well, I'd be surprised. It halves every time the scratch pad doubles. So when the scratch pad went from one to two, it went from 600 to 300. And when it went from two to four, it went from 300 to 150. Next, the big daddy that everybody's always interested in is ET hash. So Ethereum would be the coin here. If we're talking about ET hash, we're gonna be getting at stock about 11 and a half mega hash a second. This is pretty consistent. However, there are some options to increase the hash rate. One of the options to increase the hash rate is to unlock the shader cores. But be forewarned here, if you unlock the shader cores, you're going to have to mess with your drivers a little bit because now with the new AMD drivers, they are locking out cards that have been BIOS modded. So that's kind of a thing with AMD that, that used to make them a lot stronger versus Nvidia was that you didn't have to deal with this and you could mod to your heart's content. However, on the latest drivers now, AMD has gone the way of the green in the worst way possible. So not super stoked on that. However, that's the hash rate for the RX 460. It can get upwards of 14 mega hash a second if you're willing to mess with drivers and flashing the BIOS. Next, we have X16R, which is gonna be the savior of GPU mining, as, as it's known in some places, which is gonna be Ravencoin. And on Ravencoin here, we're looking at a, a, weird, a weird problem with this particular card, and it, it kind of translates over to a lot of AMD GPUs where the hash rate fluctuates pretty drastically to the point to where this particular RX 460 could be under one mega hash a second and go all the way up to three mega hash a second. On a long-term average of about three hours, you were looking at 1.8 mega hash a second. This is pretty bad and I'll tell you why. I have an eight GPU rig of GT 1030s right now. And each one of those GT 1030s stays consistent on a long average at about one and a half mega hash a second. So only about 0.3 short of an RX 460 and yet about half the price. Therefore, what I would tell you, if you're gonna be looking at Ravencoin to look towards the green team, and of course, at the same time, if you're looking for a cheap option, the GT1030 is pretty awesome as far as all of that goes, especially when you consider the fact that while the RX 460 in this particular case pulls 60 watts, the GT1030s are pulling about 20 to 25 watts and almost getting the same hash rate. Things may change, of course, as miners for AMD are optimized for X16R, but at this time, it just isn't really quite something you wanna be looking at. Finally, we have the last NVIDIA favored algorithm that may be changing here soon, actually is changing here soon, thanks to the Z, what is it, Z9 Mini from Bitmain, which is going to be the Equihash algorithm. And we're gonna have to retest all of this, but that gives us plenty of content and I hope to stay on the ball for you guys as much as possible. It's, it's pretty difficult keeping up with all the content. So y'all help me out in the comment section and we'll, we'll, we'll work through it. You can also check it out in Discord and we're always chatting over there about new things that are happening. That being said, the RX 464 gigabyte pulls about 104 hash a second and pulls the most power for the GPU at 65 watts. And that's gonna be a problem if you're looking at RX 464 gigabyte or RX 460 that does not have an additional six pin. Now, luckily this particular card, if you're gonna buy this with the Amazon link, affiliate link in the description below, I don't think you can actually buy these anymore, but that you can buy the 560 variant. Luckily it has a six pin PCIe power adapter. Now we talked about the problems with the PCIe risers and the SATA to Molex adapters burning up, of course. And when we talked about that, we kind of talked about the standards and what you could expect. Now, while you can pull 75 watts from the rail, because of the actual risers themselves, you really only want to be pulling a max of 66 watts. And 65 watts gets really, really close to that. So it's good that it has the additional six pin because if it didn't, and you buy one that doesn't, you don't want to be putting it on a riser and running Equihash in particular, or for that matter, X16R. 
Now, if you're talking about some of the other algorithms, Kryptonite, Light, all the way through ET hash, you don't go above 60 watts at all. It's, it idles somewhere, or sorry, it stays in between 50 and 60 watts the entire time. So that pretty much wraps it up. That is the overview for the mining on the Sapphire Nitro RX 464 gigabyte. I hope you guys got what you needed out of this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and comment down below. Come check out our Discord and come watch me play games if you're into video games over on twitch.tv slash sonofattack underscore. I'm also up for best thumbnail right now and we're getting pretty close to that closing out for the Crypto Influence Award. So I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description below if you could go over there and vote for me it doesn't take very much time and that would be pretty awesome so i'll see you next tuesday